Hey hey you beautiful people, I hope you are doing well. Last time we finished painting up some car playing gentlemen so we can put them in the diorama. Let's build the diorama for them so they don't have to sit on the ground anymore. I'm starting the whole process by cutting up an XPS block to shape and size it with a metal saw off screen. Because I don't have enough space for the camera to capture this hot garbage process of cutting a massive foam board. It would be much easier and precise to use a hot wire cutting tool, but a new metal saw does fine for the first time try and is much cheaper and easier to store than a whole hot wire jig. Anyways, the rut in the middle was cut with a box cutter since the blade can be adjusted for the length needed. You don't need to be precise about it, it's enough that the tank fits in the rut and has a few millimeters of space left on the sides. Since a dirt road has a lot of track and wheel marks, it's a good idea to recreate them in the diorama. The best material for this is hobby clay, which is really cheap and can be formed easily with fingers and basic tools, and dries on air after a decent time. This is important so you don't create tears in it. You also have to create a somewhat thin layer as the clay will crack while it dries, but hey, that would look cool in the desert diorama. Maybe I'll do that sometime in the future. Now that I have a layer of clay, I can carefully press the header in the ground to create a stable platform for it and create the exact track marks it should leave. As you can see, I'm using old spare metal tracks from Freo Mothers and my smaller hobby knife handle to create track and wheel marks from different vehicles as well. A road is seldom used by only one type of vehicle. The type of vehicle does not really matter in my opinion, as the track marks aren't nearly as recognizable to tell that a VK30.01 should have never rolled down the front. It's a good idea to keep spare parts like tracks and wheels from older kits for this exact reason. You'll also see me use jerry cans in a few minutes. The hoarding is real, my friend. So, the diorama is too flat for my taste, therefore I'm gluing in some XPS foam cuts to recreate slight hills on the two sides of the road. I'm gluing the parts with basic PVA glue and I'm placing some weights on them since the glue likes to expand a bit. Now that I have created the basic layout for the diorama, it's time to add some texture to the sides. I'm mixing PVA glue with fine dirt and a bit of brown acrylic paint. The paint had absolutely no use whatsoever and I don't even know why I mixed it in. I will prime the whole diorama anyways, so you can skip this step. This disgusting mixture can be applied with an old brush easily. I tried to get some of it on the dark clay as well to blend the two textures together. But the goo is still wet, I add more earth on top of it to enhance the whole ground. As you can see, there's still a lot of unfinished ground and the XPS foam grid shows through. I decided to add Aki's muddy ground texture it, just to be sure that I get every part now. Before I go further on the vegetation, I decided to create a small brick fence out of XPS foam to give the diorama some verticality. This was made before the grass and bushes were done, to give it the ground clearance to stick tightly to the base. To give it a brick layout, I measured the brick height and width, cut a slight opening with the box cutter and enlarged the cuts with the blunt side of the blade. The brick texture was then easily added with a ball of aluminium foil crumbled together. To give the foam more rigidity, I went to town with diluted PVA glue. This also protects the XPS from, from the Tamiya primer I'll spray on it. I think the primer's thinner melts polystyrene, so it's a good idea to give it extra protection. But I could be wrong about this one. The primer is now sprayed on from a rattle can and will also play a role as the mortar between the bricks in the future. It's a good idea to poke a toothpick in it for priming and painting, so you don't spray it on your hand. I paint the bricks with about 5 or 6 different red and orange tones, since rear bricks have all sorts of colors too. It doesn't really matter what tones you use, as long as you are fine with the result. Just be careful not to paint the mortar between the bricks. With the wall almost done, I can test fit it on the ground and see where to put static grass. I also apply a bit of AK matte paste to fill in some gaps between the bricks and the ground. 
Now that the brick wall is 90% done, I can upgrade the ground even more. I sprinkle even more earth on the ground, but this time I will use diluted PVA from above to fix it. Then I add dried roots from the garden to simulate twigs on the ground. The whole mess is then fixed in place with diluted PVA as mentioned before. To add the grass I add undiluted PVA glue to the base. I don't even cover the whole ground, just a few spots. I do have a homemade static grass applicator, but it decided to not cooperate and I didn't like the result that I got. You can see the mediocre grass on the left top side of the screen. I then decided to just make tufts with my hands and simply press them on the glued spots. Now that the grass is on the base, I can prime the whole diorama with Tamiya's XF1 flat black paint. If you ask why the hell I do this, I like to work from a point where the following paints have the same chance to stick to the materials, and I also didn't like the color of the static grass, so the next step is to paint the weeds. As mentioned before, the color of the static grass is too dull in my opinion. To fix the issue I sprayed the whole grassland over with Tamiya's XF5. It's important to cover the grass from all angles, not to leave any black straws. The top part of the grass was painted with a mix of Tamiya's XF5 green and XF3 flat yellow to give it a more realistic look. The top parts of ground vegetation is often lighter and also gets hit by more light. Now that the grass is green again, I can focus my attention on the earth parts of the diorama. The base was painted in AK Interactive Sand color. Due to the height differences in the terrain and track and wheel marks in it, it is especially important to hit the diorama with paint from all angles. I was careful not to overspray the spots where the grass tufts are, but in hindsight I could have gone a lot closer to them. They kind of have two deep shadows now, but it's a lesson learned for the next time. The next step is to make those finely created textures pop. First I use light enamel earth wash to somewhat correct the dark shadow parts between the grass tufts and to give the whole earth scene a base tone as I did on the tank. It's a no brain cell needed type of job, I just slap on the wash and don't even wait for it to dry. To really make the earth texture pop I also added the interior streaking grime from AK to make the higher parts stand out more and to give the track and wheel marks more depth. Remember, it's not the name of the product that should define its use, but how well you can fit it in the needed role. And this dark brown color fits perfectly here. This also helps to create some darker spots on the terrain which signal damper earth. A grass only diorama would be boring and not too realistic, so I decided to add more variety in the vegetation. You don't always need to buy expensive modeling foliage for your projects. In this case I created some sort of fern with moss leaves. I just glued them together on a sheet of baking paper. After the PVA glue is dry, I can easily peel off the whole plant I just created. Of course, pre-made vegetation is also fine and in fact I used a lot of it in this diorama. Some sort of flowery bushes with white petals from the Green Stuff World selection were added as well as even more moss leaves, but this time separately from each other. I also wanted to create a small tree since the hatchery itself has some branches on the hull for added camouflage. For this happy little tree I used a bigger chunk of root from the garden and glued on extra smaller roots for more twigs. I used PVA glue, but super glue would have been better option here. The twigs almost fell off during the following step. Of course a tree without leaves would look pretty sad in a lush late spring diorama, so I needed to add them. This was done by applying a few spots of PVA glue and then adding AK's beach foliage parts. I tried to select the better parts, as a lot of static grass is on it to hold the leaves together. To be honest it looks more like a hatch to me, but that's a problem for the next time as well. Attaching the small tree was easy though, I just needed to poke a hole through the base and add some PVA glue to it and then push the tree trunk in it. Done. To sell the tree I also gathered some leaves that have fallen from the box during assembly and sprinkled them around the tree. 
After a little bit of AK gravel and sand fixer, the leaves are no steady part of the diorama and won't fall off. Now that almost all foliage is completed, I can turn my attention back to the brick wall. It still looks too clean, so a quick dark brown earth wash was applied on the lower part of it. This will unify it with the base of the diorama. A quick rain streak effect was done by adding the light earth wash and modulating it with vertical brush strokes. This makes the wall even more worn and torn looking. Some spots even got it as deeper wash to simulate wear and tear in the mortar that's crumbling down. The wall still looks too clean in my opinion, so I went to town with a light green wash simulating moss growth on the wall. How ironic, considering that the real moss is sitting next to it. I'm a modeling monster it seems. The wall was attached to the base with a toothpick still in it and glued on with AK matte paste. I had to put the matte paste box on top of it so it would stay in place until the paste dried up completely. While it was still wet, I used the wet brush to blend it in the groundwork. The wall looks properly dirty and worn down, however it was still missing something. So I bought some laser cut paper ivy from AK. The paper itself has some minor print on it, but a quick brown layer of paint for the stalk and a deeper green for the leaves is still a good idea. Cutting this damn paper ivy gave me more headaches and cursing than cutting back the real thing. But hey, I like challenges so I powered through it. Attaching it was not so bad fortunately, I had to use super glue to fix it in place and starting at the bottom helped a lot. After look at the assembled diorama I still felt that the grass was too dark so I painted some tufts over with a lighter acrylic paint. The tree itself also looked weird, so I painted the wooden parts with a light grey and while still wet, added a light green acrylic wash to it to simulate moss again. Interior streaking grime wash was then applied to give the deeper parts a pin wash. For the big finale. I can finally glue on the header and its crew to the diorama and call it a day. The diorama is now finished and the crew can play cards in peace. This is my first diorama made on an XPS foam brick and I like how it turned out. Sure, there are a lot of errors, but I will learn from them and in the future I'll create even better dioramas. It was fun and all, but now I'd be glad to go back building tanks. If you like this video, write to us and look up our other stuff on the shown outlet. Thank you for watching and keep us in your sights.